Welcome to the example of one improper integral, which might take time to solve, but has a very nice case here. So the integral is from minus infinity to infinity, x cubed e to the minus x4 dx. And I can see infinities here, so I can claim this is improper integral. And to solve this case, we know that we probably should break it into two integrals from minus infinity to a, x cubed e to the minus x to the 4 dx plus from a to plus infinity x cubed e to the minus x to the 4 dx there's a theorem or basic properties of the integrals that says you can do that but only if both integrals exist from minus infinity to a so this a actually might sometimes mess up the situation in case there is a vertical asymptote at a but in this case, it seems like everything is fine, and we can, for example, choose 0. So I would break it into two integrals from minus infinity to 0, x cubed e to the minus x to the 4 dx plus from 0 to plus infinity x cubed e to the minus x to the 4 dx. And then to make the notation faster, I will call it i1 plus i2 integral so i that makes sense okay let's see the trick is if one of those integrals diverge which means blows up everything blows up that makes sense but if both give you a finite number then the result is also a finite number and it means that our original integral which is this one converges so let's see what's gonna happen before we move on to anything i will just take separately imp uh, indefinite integral which is integral of x cubed e to the minus x to the 4 dx. So it's not i1 and not i2. It's completely separate integral. And just uh, integrate that one first to see what is happening here. To integrate this beautiful integral, I'm noticing that I can use u substitution. So if u is minus x to the 4, then du will be minus 4x cubed dx and I almost perfectly have it over here x cubed dx is given so my way is to multiply by the missing negative 4 and divide by the missing negative 4 and that's how you get perfect du see minus 4x cubed dx that's my du then the integral becomes minus one quarter in front of it we will have e to the u du make sense then we can work with this integral separately so not taking it not using it as a definite integral what is the integral of e to the u e to the u so we'll have minus one quarter e to the u plus c which is minus one quarter e to the minus x to the four plus c. So I plugged my u back. So this is the result of the integration for the indefinite integral. Now I'm gonna talk about i1 and i2. So I will have this as side node. This will help us right now. i1 is the first integral from minus infinity to zero. I'm writing it down as limit. You remember this is how we do it. Now we can call it a or b or t. I like t. From t to zero, when t goes to minus infinity, x cube e to the minus x to the four dx. Now, we now treat this part as the proper integral and I'm integrating it separately. That's a definite integral, but don't forget to keep writing limit t goes to minus infinity we're gonna use it at the very end now what is the result of the integration we're gonna be using what we got here in the box so it's going to be parentheses minus one quarter e to the minus x to the four but instead of plus c i will close parentheses put a bar t and zero does it make sense so now I'm using the previous result for my definite integral. So 
So I'm still working with the limit t goes to minus infinity. And now inside of the parentheses, I need to plug the upper limit of integration minus the lower limit of integration. So minus one quarter, you can factor it out if you want e to the zero or minus zero, doesn't matter. Minus minus one quarter e to the minus t to the four close parentheses and let's maybe keep brackets outside to make it look nice now the moment integral sign disappeared and the bar disappeared finally you can use limit you need to remind yourself that even though the first piece is number since e to the zero is one this is all just negative one quarter the second one is might not be a finite number because of the t t goes to minus infinity since t goes to minus infinity you need to be careful here and think what is happening so negative one quarter will not change anything so i'm not worried about that this negative one quarter for now i don't worry about that i'm worrying only about limit of e minus t to the four when t goes to minus infinity so t is going to the left huge numbers on on the left of t axis so either graphically you imagine what exponential function does exponential function looks like this on plus infinity it goes to plus infinity on minus infinity it shrinks to zero so again x axis or in this case t axis can go to plus infinity to the right or to minus infinity to the left in both cases those are huge numbers but they might be positive or negative but f of x, y equals e to the t, goes to plus infinity or zero. At zero, it has horizontal asymptote. So when t goes to minus infinity, then, then you plug minus infinity over here and raise it to the fourth power. And now what's important to understand is that sign will matter here. Infinity to the fourth power is still infinity. So infinity just became bigger infinity. What matters is, is the final result will be positive or negative. Because if we're talking about e to the positive, then the answer will be infinity. If we're talking about e to the negative, the answer will be zero. Since minus infinity raised to the fourth power is plus infinity but then there's also one more minus in front then the total idea is so i cannot put like equal sign those are not finite numbers as you understand then we have a behavior just like e to the minus infinity or you can say e to the minus infinity to the four but that doesn't really matter in this case we don't care about the speed we care about the whole direction e at minus infinity shrinks to zero one more way to see it is to understand that e to the minus t to the 4 is the same thing as 1 over e to the t to the 4, right? What is happening with denominator? If denominator shrinks to 0, then everything goes to infinity. If denominator explodes to infinity, then everything shrinks to 0. Again, it matters what's happening with minus infinity raised to the fourth power. Since at fourth power, minus infinity is still, in is still infinity, this exposed to infinity and everything shrinks to zero and finally one more way to explain it the third way i know is using some number sense what is t that goes huge but negative for example minus a million one two three one two three right that's a negative huge number so you need to ask yourself or maybe ask your calculator hopefully yourself what is the number minus minus a million one two three one two three raised to the four number is this a big number or a small number check it right now if you want pause the video and check it using your calculator and you will see that it's a very small number so three interesting ways to answer the same question which way would you like graphical one um fraction or number sense number Number sense means you're using numbers to understand what is happening. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that the second part gives you a zero. So all this 
shrinks to zero times negative one quarter is still zero so the answer will be minus one quarter minus one quarter minus zero is minus one quarter that's good now everything depends on the second answer what is happening with i2 if i2 gives some kind of infinity then everything is infinity regardless of this negative one quarter we just got but if i2 is a number then everything is a number i2 was the integral from zero to infinity and we're gonna write limit from zero you can still use t if you want but if you don't want to get confused with the previous t maybe use something else like m m goes to plus infinity then we're working with x cube e to the minus x to the four dx again we're using the result in that box we got for the indefinite integral we have limit m goes to infinity the result of the integration with plus c remember minus one quarter it's over here e to the x minus x to the four minus one quarter e to the m minus x to the four correct correct instead of plus c i'll put brackets and a bar or parentheses from zero to m okay let's plug m and zero i will have a limit m goes to infinity minus one quarter e to the minus m to the four minus negative one quarter e to the zero brackets now the integral sign disappeared the bar disappeared it's time to work with limits m is over here and m is over here and now logic repeats but now be careful because we're plugging plus infinity this time but since it was raised to the fourth power plus infinity and minus infinity still will be plus infinity but with negative in front it's minus so we still have exactly the same situation e to the ray e raised to the minus infinity right because infinity raised to the four will be still infinity in this case it has negative in front of it what does it what does e to the minus infinity do it shrinks to zero you can see it as one over e to the infinity e to the infinity shrinks to the infinity one over infinity shrinks to zero so or you see it graphically again thus the whole first term shrinks to zero and the result for the i2 will be plus one quarter because minus and minus gives you plus and e to the zero is one so i the original integral which was broken into i1 and plus i2 became minus one quarter plus one quarter that is zero after so much work we ended up to have a zero result, which is a finite result. So we can say that the integral converges. Not only it converges, but we also have information that it converges to what? Converges to zero. That's the answer. If you want to understand graphically what just happened, I actually prepared a graph for you. This is what is happening. Here is the integral we're talking about, the very original one. Which, so this is the graph of the function y equals, or f of x, x cubed e to the minus x to the 4. We're looking at the area below the graph, if you want to see this, a cumulative function, if you want to see this. But the thing is, over here the area is positive. And on the left the area is negative. And since the function is odd, then when you fold it together, all the negative areas and positive areas add up to the same number uh, with different signs and gave you zero. That's the idea. So it's interesting because we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity and it did not blow up when we were collecting those areas because it could actually blow up if you understand that. Since both gave you numbers but they were exactly the same by absolute value with different signs, it add up to zero. If we would integrate uh, from minus 5 to plus infinity, that would be a different num situation and it would be a different number. If you integrate, so we would have a cut like over here, then it would be different. Integral from minus 300 to infinity, that would be like somewhere far to the left and so on. So it actually depends where you make a cut. And since we did not make, since we had an equal 
or even uh, if since we have the same cut from minus infinity to infinity, everything get up to zero. Hope it makes sense. <laughs> Practice more, and uh, you will be very fluent with those ideas. Basically, your job is to understand the difference between definite and indefinite integral, proper and improper integral, areas, and of course, know how to do your favorite u substitution. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.